Kennesaw State, it's a beautiful, sprawling, and diverse campus that's home to college football's most successful startup program. And today, that program reloads. I'm Nolan Alexander, and today we bring you our National Signing Day 2020 coverage. We'll give you a full view of this signing class from those in December, some mid-year enrollees, and those that put the finishing touches on this class here today. We'll hear from our head coach, Brian Bohannon, and those associated with the program to give you a holistic view of this recruiting class and what's ahead as we enter 2020. So without further ado, let's hand it off to Coach Bo. And now we're joined by the head man himself, Kennesaw State head football coach Brian Bohannon. And coach, you did a lot of heavy lifting with this class in the December signing period. We had 15 signees, seven on offense, seven on defense, one on special teams. And you really liked what you saw. There are a lot of winners in that class as far as how well their team did. And they all got their papers in early, too. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It tells you a lot about their mindset of wanting to be here. It's a really good group. We're excited about it. And we really talked to that group about helping us take it to the next level, helping us win a national championship. And I think that group is really tight. Um, they communicate a lot with each other. They're bought into what we're doing here, and we're awful excited about them. And have you seen that grow ever since December to where we are now? I know the relationships have progressed, but have you seen them fall in love with KSU and their teammates more? Well, i tell you what you see when we, we bring them in on official visits. Uh, you can tell they've already communicated a lot. As soon as they get together, they all gravitate. Uh, with our kids that are currently here, those guys coming in. It's really been a really unique class. They bonded. Um, I think they're on a mission, so I'm excited about them. And it was heavy on both sides of the line, too, some areas that you need to replace. Yeah, I think we're always trying to build our, our lines of scrimmage. When you look at the big picture of what we're trying to get accomplished, that's an area we got to continue to grow. And, and so on the offensive line, defensive line, we're continuing to replenish that, get depth, um, get a little bigger in some areas if we can. And because uh, that's that's really, you know, we're going to have skilled kids here. Um, we want to continue to build those line of scrimmage so we can continue moving forward in the playoffs. It's a star studded class. So let's look back at the 15 December signees. Cameron Donald is now an Al. Cameron comes from Woodmont High School in South Carolina. He's a really, really good football player. He's big, he's strong, uh, he's got great twitch, he has a great get off. Cameron's someone that reached out to us back in the spring, came down, visited, and we've recruited him ever since. We're excited about him. We think he's a great fit here into our culture and into this university. And uh, I'm really looking forward to get to work with Cam. I'm excited to announce Jahan Myers from Luella High School. The thing you notice about Jahan is his ball get off, his length, and his ability. He's, he's been a young player. He's only played for two years. And uh, we're excited about what he can become and the ability that he has. And we're excited to announce him to our, our family as well. I'm excited to announce the new addition to the Owl family, Shamari Reed, defensive back from Trinity Christian School. This young man brings a lot of value to the table. I had the opportunity to get to know him over the past few months, almost a year now. Excited to what he brings to the table as far as a long, rangy defensive back, but an unbelievable leader, according to his high school coach. You can see it show up on the field. He's beginning to mature as a young man, and we can't wait to have him and join the family. I'm pleased to announce that we have signed Tyler Scott from Jackson High School. Tyler, again, is a big physical young man that has a lot of tools that I think are going to be uh, lead to a really productive time here at Kennesaw State. He comes from a great family, comes from a great school. We've had some players from Jackson here before that have all done well. And Tyler is going to be someone that's going to be a big physical presence on the defensive line here at Kennesaw State. We're excited to have him and we're excited for him to be an L. We are really excited to have Elijah Kirby from Riverwood High School to join us here at Kennesaw State University. Elijah is a phenomenal defensive back, as a local product, is a very long athletic player who brings a lot of versatility to the defensive backfield. He led his team to a 10-0 record down at Riverwood High School, and we're looking forward to having a great future here at Kennesaw State University. I'm extremely excited to announce the addition of, of Trenton Jackson to the Owl Nest. Trenton's an offensive lineman from Mississippi. Trenton is a dynamic offensive lineman who moves really well through all three levels of the defense, loves to finish blocks, 
and uh, bring will bring a lot of nasty to the offensive line room. An outstanding student as well as an outstanding young man, he was selected to play in the prestigious Mississippi-Alabama All-Star Game. I'm excited to announce our next signee, Carter Penholster from Fort Payne, Alabama. Carter has done a great job in high school. He's big, field school runs great routes. He will be a great addition to our young receiver group. In addition, Carter, from the first time I met him, he showed that he had the eat that we look for in receiver here at Kennesaw State. Extremely excited to announce another addition to the offensive line unit here at Kennesaw State, James Dawson. James is an outstanding offensive lineman from Opelika High School in Alabama. James is an outstanding offensive lineman who has an, a tremendous understanding of leverage. He's a dominating run blocker and an athletic pass protector, moves his feet really well and does a tremendous job of finishing blocks. We're really excited to have James a part of the Owl family. I'm excited to announce that we've signed Gary Osby, a tough physical football player from South Georgia, from Lowndes High School in Valdosta. Gary's someone that when you talk to the high school coaches down in South Georgia, they always bring up his name and he's a really relentless, tough physical football player and we're excited about him being an owl. I'm really excited to, uh, to announce that the next signee for our class is Evan Fuller. Uh, he's a combo kicker from Bremen High School. Really explosive leg. Uh, he helped his team this year uh, go to the second round of the playoffs. He kicked several big time game winning field goals, uh, a 48 yard, a 52 yarder. He's a great punter. He's also a kickoff guy. I mean, he's gonna be a really great addition to our specialist. I want to welcome uh, D'Angelo Hardy to the nest. He's a quarterback out of Macaulay High School up in Tennessee. He helped his team win a, a state championship this year. He rushed for over 2,000 yards as a junior and a senior. Uh, had uh, multiple touchdowns. Uh, he's a, he can throw the football well. He's a dynamic player and a great leader. We're excited to have D'Lo in the nest. Super excited to announce the addition of LD Clarity, quarterback from Pine Forest High School in Pensacola, Florida. LD led his team to consecutive playoff appearances in his junior and senior year. LD is a dynamic player who has all the qualities we were looking for in a quarterback both on and off the field. He led his team to consecutive playoff appearances in his junior and senior seasons. Extremely excited to have LD Clarity in the Owl Nation. Jalen Barnum to our Kennesaw State football family. He's an unbelievably talented young man from South Georgia, from Wayne County High School. He's physical, he's fast, he's tough, and he brings a lot of eat when he plays ball. Welcome to the family, Jalen. We're now joined by the man that helps instill effort, attitude, and toughness to this new signing class and those that are already here. We're joined by Coach K, who oversees our strength and conditioning. Now, you don't like doing this. You don't like being in front of camera. You like being behind the scenes. Why is that, and why do you think that's important? Well, typically, you know, when you work in, in support staff as a strength coach or an athletic trainer or in operations or in equipment, um, when people know who you are, it means you've made a mistake, right? And so we don't get into what we do as a, as a profession uh, or vocation to get our face in front of the camera. So typically like, we like to stay behind the scenes, do things that other people don't know about, and that's just kind of the role that we play. And the longer you're in that role, the more you kind of fall into that role. So I would say that most people in support are, are more like me. So for the new signing class that joins us here at Kennesaw, what does it look like when they first enroll, when they first come here to work out? What does that plan look like? It's tough. Um, so. We take a lot of pride in the way we go about developing our culture, and our culture is one of accountability. So on time, wearing the right thing, finishing through the line, and, and all those things start with a great conversation that is communicating our standards. Because we believe that in order for them to do well, they need to know what's expected of them. So we sit them down, we talk, tell them where to park. We tell them where their classes are, we tell them what to wear, we tell them where to be, at what time, so on and so forth. Now during the summer, the, the, the football coaches can't work with the kids very often. I think they can get two hours a week um, 
and we don't really use that time until almost camp starts, so camp's about to start. So it's really me and my staff's job, it's our responsibility to teach them how we go about our business and the importance of doing things the right way. So uh, me and my staff oversee, it starts with class check, right? So they're gonna be at their classroom early, okay? Hats off, earrings out, sitting in the front two rows of class. And if there's not, there's some type of a consequence to that. And they're gonna start to understand that it's a 360 degree program. So it's not, I run the weight room and he runs this and he runs this. We have a full circle of communication that really we all work to support each other. So it starts with academics and being where you're supposed to be, knowing your schedule and being on time. Um, and then of course, you know, they're gonna come work out. And uh, a lot of these kids have trained really hard uh, since they were in middle school, definitely since they've been in high school. Um, being from Massachusetts, I didn't know how serious high school strength and conditioning was down south, right? These kids have football class, and we had English. They have football class, <laughs> right? So um, every day, five days a week, for at least three and a half years, these kids are in a weight room, being trained by their coaches, by strength coaches. So a lot of them are pretty competent lifters, right? But they've never been held, likely, they've never been held to the standard of consistency that we demand here. So we call it effort, attitude, and toughness, right? And that has developed largely on the field when we run and we do conditioning work. Um, so it's attack and finishing drills every single rep. How you go about your business when you start your drill and how you go about especially finishing that drill. Um, and if not, there's some type of a consequence. Um, so that's how we evaluate our effort. Our attitude is our yes sir, no sir approach. I mean, you have to be a coachable kid. Right, because if you're gonna start back talking, you're not gonna make it very far in this program. Right, and that starts with me, right, and that moves right into the position coach, to their coordinators, and obviously to Coach Bohannon. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't have conversations and explain how to do things better, we coach them up, but they need to be yes sir, no sir, uh, and we evaluate that right away. And then toughness is body language. Uh, we never wanna show any type of weakness to our, to our opponent or to our enemy, so we never have our hands on our head, we never put our hands on our knees, and those are things that kids automatically have done for a long time, and we're working to stamp those things out. Um, so there's a huge culture shock in how we go about just the very, very basics of our business, right? We don't start, on the line, we start behind the line. We finish through the line. When we call set, you gotta set fast. If you don't set fast, we restart the whole warm up. So on a day where you're supposed to have a 60 minute session, 45 might be spent on a warm up because you've had to restart it nine times. So the kids just need to start to understand through me and my staff how serious we uphold the standard of effort, attitude, and toughness, and attention to detail. Um, when they get into the weight room, that's typically where they're a little bit more comfortable because right, they've been taught how to lift, they've been lifting weights for a long time. Um, we just do a basic evaluation of how well they move. Because some kids have been trained really well and some haven't. Some come healthy, some come with injuries. So we start everybody at the ground, right? We evaluate their movement we, and we, we progress them appropriately person to person as we go through it. The objective of the summer is to obviously get them bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive, but ultimately is to acclimate them to the way we go about our business. So when they get thrown in with the upperclassmen, they don't hold us back. So the entire month of June, they're training with us all summer in just that freshman class, kind of like a boot camp, or you know, like you know what the Spartans call the Agogi, right? Or the Agogi, like we really want to keep them in their group, training them to do it our way. So when they get put in with the older guys, there's trust, there's a foundation of understanding, and we can roll as a team at that point without them holding back the upperclassmen. Coach, I got some bad news for you. Yeah. You did really good. We might have to have you on camera. No, probably not going to happen. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving us an inside look as to what these freshmen are about to go through. It sounds like a lot of sacrifice, but it sounds like, based on our results, it's worth it, right? Absolutely. We've seen, you know, this has been honed over the several years. Um, and I think that the way we do it right now really gives our kids an opportunity to make the decision to do things the right way. That's Coach K. He's going to have you fired up. Let's continue a look at our National Signing Day 2020 coverage. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better because we understand mistakes happen. I'd like to return this, please? Oh, no returns. It's going to cost me $43. Ouch. Yeah. It's a lot. At Fifth Third Bank, we've got your back, which is why we give you extra time to avoid an overdraft. Extra time. That is better. You still have to pay for this one. I don't want to. Fifth Third gives you extra time to avoid overdraft fees. This is banking. A Fifth Third better. 
Welcome back to our signing day coverage 2020 here for Kennesaw State Football. We're joined by head coach Brian Bohan and I'm Nolan Alexander. And coach, we have three mid-year enrollees. They came at the beginning of class in January. They're already in the offseason program. Carlos Allen, a defensive lineman from here in Atlanta. Dominic Knowles, an offensive lineman from down the road in Johns Creek. And then a running back from Rome, Georgia via Marshall, Jalen Sykes. What do you like about these three? Well, they all are, they're all are guys that, that can help us, and that's the reason they're in mid-year. Carlos is the only high school kid that came in. He graduated early, was able to do that, which tells you a little bit about where he is academically. Mm. Um, and he's a defensive lineman. He actually played both ways in high school, and uh, he's going to come in as a defensive lineman. And he's getting acclimated to how we do things right now, which is a little bit of an adjustment. I mean, think about it now. You were in high school a few days ago. You hop into a Division I football program and college classes. It's a big adjustment. But he's doing well. Uh, Dominic Knowles, big offensive lineman, 6'4", you know, close to 300 pounds. Um, went to GMC and got some experience there. Didn't play a ton of football, um, but I'm excited about him. Uh, he's a little bigger offensive lineman like we talked about. And uh, he's acclimating, doing well. And the last one's Jalen Sykes, who uh, went to Marshall from – was at Rome High School, then went to Marshall. He can fly. He's a slot back for us. Um, I think he's got a chance to be an impact player as well. So I'm excited about all three of those guys. Them coming in early really gives them a jump up on coming in and helping us a little more in the fall. You can tell Coach is pumped. Let's get you pumped and meet our three mid-year enrollees. I'm excited to announce Carlos Allen from Frederick Douglass High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Another thing you notice about Carlos is his size and his ability, the way that he plays the game. He plays with a high motor. He's physical. He runs around. He plays multiple positions up front. And I think Carlos is going to be a great addition for us. He's also a good student. And we're excited about Carlos Allen from Frederick Douglass High School. I'm excited to announce a huge addition for the Owls up front with Dominic Knowles. Dominic is an offensive lineman from Georgia Military College. We're super excited about Dominic. He is a very large human. He can bend, he can move people. We think that he will add a lot of age and experience and maturity to an already good offensive line room. Uh, we couldn't be more excited about Dominic. We're thankful to have him as an Owl. I want to welcome uh, Jalen Sykes to the nest. Jalen comes to us from uh, Marshall University. He's a dynamic player. He comes out of Rome High School where he, where he helped his team win two state championships. He's, uh, he rushed for well over 2,000 yards his junior and senior year. And uh, we want to welcome Jalen to the nest. KSU has its sights set on a grand prize in 2020. Don't miss the chance to see the next step in college football's most successful startup team. Season ticket renewals are available now to see the Owls play six home games at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. Visit KSUOwls.com or call 470-578-4849. We're now joined by Liam Klein, who oversees our recruiting operations at Kennesaw State. And Coach, you've been here from the get-go with Coach Bohannon. How is the scope of what we do when it comes to recruiting grown from four or five years ago to where we are now? Well, the, the, the plan of, our, of attack here at Kennesaw State is pretty much the same. We, we put in a pretty good plan when we started here and how we we're going to recruit the Southeast and how we're going to recruit the state of Georgia. And that hasn't changed the type of young man we're looking at and the type of recruit we're looking at certainly has. We're definitely getting uh, a, better, uh, a better player per se than we were five years ago. Not taking anything away from the guys that started this program, but the talent level has increased since we've started. When you try to sell the program to a recruit, what resonates right now? I think everything that Kennesaw State has to sell, obviously a big part of that is how this university is growing and all the different things it offers young men when, when we recruit them. Uh, having a successful football program and doing the things that we're doing on the field certainly doesn't hurt. That, that is a big part of what we're selling. Coach has talked about with those December signees, seven on offense, seven on defense, a lot are in the lines. And he, he wants to see everyone that has the effort, attitude, and toughness. But to expand upon that, what are you looking for when it comes to maybe a typical size or a technique or a tenacity off the football? Well, I think the biggest thing with our program here is everyone would like really big guys. We know that we have really made a living here football-wise with guys that play with a chip on their shoulder, have a really – uh, a blue chip mentality about them, have a lot of eat about them. So when we go out recruiting, we're looking for guys that are fast, that are twitchy, and have something about them. So when you talk to them and you 
tell them exactly how we run our program here, if they're all into that and excited by that, those are the guys that are the right fit for us. We saw how important depth was across the board this season. We had many injuries, we only had the flu bug, but it was that next man up and there really wasn't that lack of production, especially when you go to the quarterback position and what we're able to do with Wofford. When you look at this roster now and some of the signees, and you've got a couple of quarterbacks there from December signing, we got receivers, we got running backs. How important is it as soon as they get on campus to start to build that depth? Well, I think the biggest thing that every program wants to do is build depth. And I've been part of programs where we knew that if we uh, lost one or two guys, it could really change how we're playing the game or and what we can call and what we can't call. Mm -hmm. Over the years, the way we've recruited and the young men we brought in here, there's competition almost at every position now. So when there's competition, that means that two guys or sometimes three guys or four guys are getting better every day. So when you lose someone and go through the things that we went through this year, I can speak on, on the defensive behalf that we lost a few guys throughout the year and we're constantly plugging in younger players. It goes back to recruiting a, a, a young man that's a little bit more talented than what we started with, mm -hmm. and they're able to adjust quicker and come in and help us quicker. And having that competition, that's the, big, that's the biggest part of it on both sides of the ball. When you have competition, guys are going to be ready to play. And when guys get injured, they're ready to step up and make some plays for us. I have three mid-year enrollees on the roster that have been in class, they've been in the off-season program. What does it look like from a coaching staff side to try to get them acclimated, not only to the team, but to Kennesaw State? That's the biggest challenge for anybody new that's coming in here. It's just getting acclimated to going to college or going to college here at Kennesaw State if they're coming from another university and also getting used to how we do things here. Every program's different. So if they're coming from another program, we're going to run our program different than they do. There may be some things similar, but it is going to be a little bit different. And you have the month of January, you have the month of February uh, to really get them acclimated to what we do. And then when we get into the end of February and into March with spring practice, you get to see a little bit of, you know, can they pick up what we do offensively and defensively. So this month and, and February really is going to be big for them to the quicker they can learn things, the quicker they can adjust it, might, be, might result in the quicker they can help us on the field. And then as we wrap up the signing class today, obviously the heavy workload was done in December, but that doesn't mean that the staff took time off in recruiting over the months of January here in sure. February. What does that look like? Well, I, you know, you have a good break around Christmas time. You're, there's certain rules where you're allowed one phone call a week, or you know, you're really allowed to, to message them frequently, but you can only call them certain times and it never stops here, it never stops. And we knew we had some young men that we were looking at that weren't quite right there yet when we had the first signing period that are now really big targets for us. So it never really stopped. We, we kept working on them, kept recruiting them, and we always have been interested. It's just, you know, we had certain needs we had to fill in the first period, now we have certain needs we need to fill now. And we're really excited about these guys. We're, we, you know, we're ecstatic that they're gonna be owls and we can't wait to see what they can do when they get here. Always a lot of celebration when you put together an outstanding class, which is what the class of 2020 is, but then you gotta look ahead, 2021, it's gonna be here before we know it, right? It is, it is, and again, we do things a little bit differently than everybody else. Um, what you're starting to see now are the, are the big schools really going after those 2021s, those juniors. We're gonna let the dust settle a little bit. We're gonna take our time. We're gonna to get to know who these young men are. Uh, we're gonna go out to these high schools and we're gonna hear from the high school coaches uh, about who their best players are, or who their players are that are good fits for us. The good thing is, is that we've recruited the same area now for six years, seven years. We've, uh, we've done enough things on the field that when we go into high schools, people know who we are. They know what the KS is and they're right up front with, okay, coach, I've got this young man that can play for you this young man cannot. So that part's very helpful. And as we get into our spring recruiting, that's really gonna you know, start our next level, or our next class here at Kennesaw State. Coach, thanks for joining us. Congrats on a stellar class. Thank you very much. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a Fifth Third better. What does that mean? Let's say these nachos are your bank. Pretty standard. That's my bank. But with Fifth Third Bank, we put 166.7% into everything we do. Your bank. My old bank. Banking a fifth third better. That's way better. So cool. This is banking a fifth third better.
Welcome back. It's National Signing Day 2020 for Kennesaw State football. As we get close to wrapping it up, joined by head coach Brian Bohannon. And coach, you wrap up this class. I know there at the end, you're always looking for that last little touch to mm -hmm. it. What qualities were you looking for out of today's signings? Yeah, you know, most of our signing happened early. We got some mid-year guys. And I think really the, the last few in our class are guys that are difference makers that whether it's running the ball, blocking, whatever it is, that they can be different for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, to finish off this class. So we're excited about the additions uh, to this year's class and uh, they're going to help us get us over the edge, continue to move forward in the playoffs and do the things we'd like to do here. Our nation, gather me and welcome Kamari McGowan from Middle Tennessee Christian School out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Kamari McGowan is an athletic young man who brings a lot of speed to our team. What I'm most impressed with is a young man is extremely tough and he's not afraid to roll up his sleeves and go to work. He's a Mr. Tennessee finalist and we can't wait to have him on board. I'm excited to welcome to the Nest our next signee, Xavier Hill from Pleasant Grove, Alabama, where he played at Pleasant Grove High School. Xavier is a big physical receiver that's going to be great with the ball in his hands. He's going to be tough to tackle. He also has great speed. X is going to be a great addition to our unit here at Kennesaw. Please join me in welcoming Xavier Hill to the Nest. Another big class, a lot come from Georgia. 12 from Georgia when we look back at some of the mid-years and the December signees. What makes recruiting this state so attractive? Well, obviously we're in the state of Georgia. I mean, I grew up in this state. My dad was a high school coach. I, I think the talent and the coaching is as good as, as anywhere is in the country. And uh, so it's always be home base for us. Uh, we take seven coaches. We divide the state up. We go to every high school in the state of Georgia at a minimum once a year. Mm. Um, it'll always be home base for us. And uh, the majority of our roster will always be based out of Georgia. I mean, there's just so much talent here, and they're, and they're so well coached. And, uh, you know, so I, I, it's always going to be that way. And uh, excited about another great group from Georgia. And we supplement with some from out of state. But, but the, heavy, the heavy lift in the big group is from Georgia. And how much have you seen the Kennesaw State brand expand from when you first started out and you recruited that first class of OGs to where we are now? Yeah, it's changed drastically. I mean, we first started, we'd go into high school, and they wouldn't know anything about Kennesaw State, the KS, anything about our program. Now you can go just about anywhere, and not just in the southeast. We've extended this brand outside of that. You know, when we go out west and you're playing Weber State, and you're playing Montana State, and you're playing Sam Houston State in Texas, you're taking that brand of Kennesaw State football in this university to other places. And I think it's, it's well recognized right now. We can go into schools and they know who we are, what we're about. And that's huge because five years ago, six years ago, that was not the case. And I think that's not only good for football, it's great for this university. I agree. I agree. Well, before you know it, we'll have spring practice and we'll be kicking off the fall schedule. Season ticket renewals are out now for the 2020 season, highlighted by six home games at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. I know this team and this coaching staff, this entire program loves to have a packed stadium. It's important right now with those renewals out, go ahead, claim your seats or get ready for an upgrade. Absolutely. Right? It's a huge deal for us. Uh, the, you know, I, I always say our kids, the first thing they look at is to look at the home side, look at the stadium to see, see how many people are there. And it's a big deal for our kids. It's a big deal for our program. Uh, we want everybody to come be a part of what we, what we think is really special. So get involved. Uh, come to a game. Check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. Obviously, the renewals are up right now. We're going to open this thing up a little more here soon. Uh, but we want to pack Fifth Third Bank Stadium. We want to create an environment uh, for college football that's unlike any other. And, and I, I believe we can do that here. Coach, congrats on another outstanding signing class. And best of luck as we get ready for spring ball. Thanks, Nolan. So that's it for our coverage of the class of 2020 for Kennesaw State football. We hope you're just as excited as we are for this new batch of owls, and we're going to celebrate them tonight. Come on out to Dry County Brewing Company from 530 to 730 here in Kennesaw to meet the coaching staff and hear more about this amazing recruiting class. We're going to have free food brought to you by JD's Barbecue. Going to be available right at 530. And of course, you can enjoy everything that Dry County Brewing has to offer. We look forward to seeing you tonight to celebrate the class of 2020.